folks, Troy with V-Twins, the V-8s, I'm back to do the second segment of the Chrysler Imperial disc brake conversion. This segment will be the, um, the rear disc brakes. I've got the front all set. Um, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above and you can check out the front video and see how the front was done. This one's going to be the back. So I'm going to start basically with the car together. So I uh, want to get right into it. I have already taken this apart and I've already mocked up my parts on here and painted them and everything so this is the final installation so everything that I'm going to do right now is going to be quick so what I have is I have my hub and um, my brake drum and my backing plate are on here yes I've taken it off it's finger tight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this process now on your car you may or may not be able to remove the drum and the hub separately and initially anyways um, but this one here did come apart I had one that the hub came with the drum it doesn't matter anyway so I'm going to take this drum off you'll notice my backing plate has no brakes on it because I've already taken the brakes off so just disregard that what I'm going to show you at this point is I'm going to show you how to remove this this hub this is a tapered axle the hub presses on a taper much like a uh, harmonic balancer is on an engine there's a nut there's usually a cotter pin obviously I didn't put the cotter pin back in because hopefully everybody knows how to take a cotter pin out so I'm going to show you how to remove this hub using a hub removal tool that I have here this is the tool here that we want to use to take our hub off of the car so it comes in a handy dandy little case there's a circular piece like this there is a threaded piece such as this that goes in here like that and uh, it's a pretty basic puller so you assemble it as such and then what happens is your pieces hook onto it like this so there's one slot on here where this is going to go on here pretty easily there's a slot right there this thing goes on slides around there's three ears here it's like a little tripod situation so what happens is after you remove your nut you're going to take these three pieces and put it onto the hop Obviously, I remove my um, my nut. I place my puller over my lug nuts as such. You got to kind of do them all at once. Then you need to have your lug nuts handy so that you can put your lug nuts back on like this. See if I can, I think I can let that go. Take this, and uh, you gotta, because of the way this goes together, you gotta kind of finagle it around a little bit to get it to fit on here the way you really want it to. The weight of the tool kind of makes it want to hang in a different direction. I'll bring a close-up camera over so you can really see how this puller goes on here the other one on go now once I get this thing positioned the way I want to I just turn this okay so I'm going to give you a close-up with my other camera okay, so here's my puller it's assembled the three pieces go around this the bolt goes through the center and then that goes on to the end of the axle. What I probably recommend is that you put your axle nut on this end and maybe put something on there. I put a uh, flat piece of steel on here to protect the end of this. And then once you have that done, there is a tool here that you can slide on and um, use that to screw this down. Um, what I used was a wrench and you just as you turn this in it hits this end of this axle 
and it pulls your hub off as you do this. And then bingo, bongo. Now, let's talk about what happens when it doesn't come off. So, when you screw this down and you hit the end of it or you do whatever and you can't get this off, what you can do is heat this hub to expand it. That's what I had to do with both of these. I mean, God knows how long these hubs have been on this 50-year-old car. So I took a rosebud on the torch, I heated this up really good, and I kept applying pressure until I couldn't apply pressure anymore. Then I thought that I was defeated, but that is not the case. As with both sides, what happened was I put the heat to it, I put a lot of tension on it, put the heat to it, more tension. Then I quit, but I left the tension on with the puller. As these, as these two metal pieces cooled, it must have released itself because then I heard the puller pop. It was probably about maybe three to five minutes. By the time I got the torches put away and was feeling defeated, boom, the hub popped off. That's what happened on the first one. When I did the second one, I knew I heated that one up really good and I just shut the torch off and I just waited and sure as heck, about three to five minutes later, as it cooled, it went pop and it popped loose. So once you get it loose, then you can just take this whole thing comes off like this. And then you can just set it on the bench, on the bench like this. Take your axle nuts, your um, lug nuts rather, take your lug nuts off of this. And then you can take your puller off, there's your hub off, and then you can put your tool away as soon as you figure out how this comes apart again. Like I said, there's a slot, boom, each one comes out. Take all these off. And then we put this away. Okay, now that I have my hub removed, I can remove the bolts that go around my backing plate. Now, let's say I had my brakes were on here. You probably don't need to take all the brake stuff off. I did because I had to send this backing plate to a manufacturer to make me this kit. So you use your own discretion as far as taking the brakes off. And I can take this right off. Now we have our bare hub. And voila, there we go. Now we've got a bare rear end. I already cleaned the surface and everything so we're ready to go. Now we're ready to do the installation. There's a bracket piece that goes on here like this and it's got a seal in it. Now I'm going to give you a close-up of that. Here's my bracket that is going to bolt to the end of the axle flange and that requires a seal to be in it. So I took my seal and I drove it into this bracket already. I got my rear end housing cleaned. There is a key that is on the axle shaft itself that, that locates this um, hub. You're going to want to remove that because the key is going to obstruct the seal going over the axle shaft. So I would recommend you remove that, clean up the shaft, put a little lubrication on it, and then we can go ahead and put this on the car. You don't want to jam this key up. You just want to be kind of ginger with it, get it out of the way. And I'll bring my small camera over so you can see what this looks like. Okay, so here is the key. I've uh, put a punch. I've knocked this up like this, so it's right here. I'm going to take that right out of the way. We'll put that right over here on the bench. Here's my piece with the seal in it. You'll notice there's some gray material on this taper. This is Never Seize. I put Never Seize on there, so if I ever want to remove this hub from here, I can easily pull it off. It won't be corroded on there. Chances are I won't be the guy, but I'm thinking the next guy is going to be pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little grease on the inside of this seal, and then I'm going to put this on the end of the axle. So I just placed a light amount of grease just on the lip of the seal, just to just kind of lube it up. I don't want to put a dry seal against this, uh, against this piece of metal. I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to smudge a little grease onto the, the, um, the axle shaft itself. The next thing I have is I have this 
shim piece that goes on here that goes between the axle housing and my base plate. But one of the things I do want to do is I want to apply some sealant to my axle end, my housing end here, and put this on, and then put some grease, uh, put some sealant on the outside of this before I put my adapter plate on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't put much, I just put a little bit on here. Um, you probably could get away without putting a sealant on here, but I just don't want to have to deal with a leak afterwards. And I'm just basically putting a, a very, very thin layer of it on there. And then I'm going to put my shim on here like this. Put a little bit more of this on the outside of here, very, very lightly. And now my, my adapter piece I can put on the car. So the thing with this adapter piece is it's kind of triangle shaped. You'll notice there's a flat spot here. There's two bolts in the front, two bolts in the rear, and one at the bottom at almost like, say, say 5.30, 6 o'clock at the bottom. So you're just going to want to slide this right onto the shaft, slide this right over those bolts, and then voila, here we are. Our adapter bracket is on. I got some nice, fresh, new lock washers. I'm going to put those on. And then I'm going to put the nuts on. These are the original nuts that had come off that held the backing plate on along with the studs that were holding the um, backing plate on and I didn't see any real reason to have to change this. I mean all the hardware looks okay. I just replaced the lock washers to make sure that they were gonna they weren't all flattened out and they would they would hold this so it wouldn't loosen up. Then I'm going to take a wrench and I'm going to tighten these up. Let me grab a wrench. So I'm just going to take my wrench and I'm going to tighten this down. Just get them snug. I mean, if you want it to be super technical, these are 3 8 so you can torque them. That torque would be, uh, generally speaking, about 35 foot pounds of torque. Uh, I don't think I really have to worry about that. The, both the, the axle flange, housing flange, and this piece is pretty huge, pretty heavy duty piece of metal. I'm not, it's not like I'm going to over tighten it or warp it or anything, so I'm not really all that worried about that. So once I get all five of these bolts fairly snug, then I'll put a little tension on them. I'll use a crisscross criss -cross pattern to tighten them so that they're nice and tight and even. I do like using a wrench because I can feel how tight I'm making something. Grab the other can. Okay, so as you can see, here's my piece. There's my seal in there, seal in the axle. I've got these are the studs that came through. I slipped my piece on. I bolted it up tight. It will only go on here this one way, right or left. So this is this is the setup that you need. And um, now we're going to put our um, our brackets are going to go on that are going to hold our caliper. So we're going to we'll get those. Those are right over here. I got these couple of brackets here. I got a couple of spacers. I've got four bolts and four nuts. So what happens is these go onto the back side of this as so and then the caliper attaches to that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bolt these on. Okay so when I do this I got these brackets. We want to have the pointed ends facing the rear of the car and then we want to there's an offset on the hole it's narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. It goes like this, so it's a little bit, so this angle is more upward. And then on the bottom, 
it makes it so this angle is a little bit more downward. If you have any questions, you'll know when you go to put your caliper on, the bolts won't line up. I'm going to put this top one on. I put my two bolts in. I put my two spacers. I put my, my uh, make sure I'm in the right way. Yep. Talk a great game. I just got to do it. Put my top bolts on like this. I'm not going to tighten it. I'm just going to, these are lock nuts anyway, so they're a pain in the ass to tighten up. So I'm going to need to do, use a wrench to do that, but I'm going to use this for the, for the fitting portion of it. Put my top one on there. Now I, I want to do my bottom. So I want to, let's see, my bottom is going to be so wide, wide. Yes. Yes. So what I want to do here is the point goes in the back. The narrow side goes towards the bottom to make this as wide as possible. I'm going to put my two bottom bolts on. Put those through. My other two spacers are going to go on here like this. Then I can put my nuts on. And I'll show you what we have with the small camera. Okay, so here we are. Here's my upper bracket. You can see how it's set up here. I've got my, my bolts come through, spacer, nuts, bracket, same on the bottom. Now, it, what's going to happen is, here is my caliper. These bolts come through here like this and here. My brackets go right onto this caliper like that. So, we're going to take the caliper and we're going to put it on there with the bolts, but I need my hands for that. Okay, so much like the front setup, you want to make sure when you select your caliper that you have the right side. So I've got my caliper, I've got the bleeder at the high side, so it's at the top like this. That shows you that you're on the right side. I'm going to bring my piece over here and I'm going to set it on here just like this. And I'm going to get my bolt in here. You don't have to do it particularly, you know, like I'm doing it right now. I just kind of am doing this, doing it this way for um, illustration and fitment purposes. Because obviously the rotor and the hub isn't on now, so why would you bolt the caliper? But what it's going to do is when I turn these, bolt these brackets to this caliper, it's going to make sure that my brackets are selected in the right way. It's also going to line them up with the caliper. Now I can get a socket and a ratchet and I can bolt these two brackets down and I'm assured that my caliper is going to fit when I put my other pieces on here. I'm going to get a wrench, I'm going to tighten this up and we'll go from there. An 11 16th, a 5 8 and an 11 16th to snug this up with. And because it's a lock nut, it's going to go on tight the entire way. So I really only like to do these once. So I'm just going to tighten it until it's just a little bit snug. Okay, so I got them all snug, and now my caliper bolts are still finger tight. So I know I'm in good alignment there. I can go ahead and tighten these down nicely, permanently, so to speak. There we go. What I have is I have my bracketries on here that holds my caliper. My caliper is where it's going to be when it's done. Um, I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you. So here we are. The caliper, all these bolts are tight. So look at this a little bit from the back side. I got my bracket that went to the um, rear end. I got my spacers. I got my caliper bracket and then my nuts. The same as like that on the bottom over here. You can 
see that, same deal. And my caliper bolts on here like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this caliper off now, and then at this point, I'll be able to continue with the assembly. I'm just gonna take my caliper back off. Notice it's nice and finger tight, so that I know that this bracket is in perfect alignment with my two brackets that I just put on. So when I put my the rest of my parts on here, I know I'm good. All right, now you remember we had the keyway, the key that I had taken out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that back in before I put my hub on. When you do this, you don't wanna make sure you don't want, you wanna make sure you don't jam up the key. At this point, I can put my, my hub right on. And then I can put my washer and my nut. Today I'm not going to tighten this completely because I do have a new nut and washer set that's somewhere in the U.S. Postal Service that will show up at some point in time and I'll be able to put that on so there's no need for me to be tightening that now. So the next thing I'll do is I'll take my rotor assembly and I'll put my rotor assembly on here like this. It slides right over. I'll take a couple of my axle, my um, wheel lug nuts and screw them on here so it keeps my rotor true against this hub so it's not wanky. So there we go. All right, so everything looks good there. Now I'm ready to put my caliper on permanently. It's gonna slide right up and over this um, rotor. I'm gonna bolt it on exactly like I just did. Matter I just find in the hole. A little bit, there it is. And because I spent the time lining these brackets up perfectly, I can just screw this caliper on here with my fingers quite easily. If I were to have this misaligned, it wouldn't want to screw in and it would give me a hard time and I'd have to loosen up my other brackets to get it realigned. That's why I did the other step to do this. So right now my caliper is on. Looks pretty sexy. Now I just need a three quarter inch wrench. wrench. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten the bolts down for my bracket. <clears throat> All right, there it is. It's nice, it's on there. My rotor's free, I'm good to go. I'll bring the small camera over, I'll show you what I got. Okay, so here we are. Axle nuts back on. This is going to have to be torqued. I don't know the spec off the top of my head because, like I said, I wasn't going to torque it today because I'm going to replace it. But this sets the bearing preload on your axle. So I'm going to make sure you torque this nut to the proper spec and make sure you put your uh, cotter pin in there. Um, so I just got these on here just to make sure that my road is flush. You can see it. It moves fine. I got my calipers bolted on there and if you can see in here in the dark you can see this is where my caliper bolts onto the brackets you can see the one on the other side and you can see it's identical to this my bleeder is on the top and my lines on the bottom so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on getting we're going to work on getting some brake lines on this so that'll be the next part now we are underneath the car. You can see I got my two calipers on the left and on the right. And um, what we're going to have is we're going to have a couple of brake lines that are supplied. They're going to come off of the caliper over here and go into this bracket here. Now, this bracket was supplied in the kit and I mounted these on both sides. I mounted them to the existing um, 
steel brake line that was on here, what I did was I welded my bracket to that. I'll give you a little close up of that uh, with the camera so you can see what's going on. Okay, so here's my brake line supplied in the kit. Here's my banjo bolts and my copper washers along with a couple of clips. So I'm going to use that to plumb my um, calipers. My calipers are here on the right. There's my fitting and my bleeder. Here I have a bracket that I welded to the, um, to the bracket that hold, held the original brake line. I did that over here and I did the same thing over here. Here's my fitting, my bleeder, and my, uh, my bracket here that's welded on there. I already did this and painted it and everything so you just have to kind of muddle through on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, assemble my brake line and get that to go from here to here. So as I discussed in the front, this setup works like this. So what you have is you have the banjo bolt, which you can see has a hole in one end and a hole in the side so the fluid can go through it. You put a washer on the banjo bolt, the banjo bolt goes through the brake line, and then a washer goes onto the other side. So now I can screw this onto my, um, onto my caliper. This end here will go into my bracket, and then this clip will hold that on. So we're going to get at that right now. I got my brake line thing all set together. We'll screw this on here just by hand. It's like this. And then I'm going to take my brake line and I'm going to put it into this bracket like so. And then I'm going to put my, my clip right on here. Just like this. Give it a little whack. And now it's on there just like it should be. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to tighten my brake line down to squeeze my copper washers and I'm looking pretty good right there. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing on, on this side as I did on the other side. I put my washer and my banjo bolt together. I'm going to screw that on here onto the caliper fitting. Just going to put it on there kind of hand tight, get it snug. I'm going to put this into my bracket. And I'm going to put my little horseshoe clip on here. I'm going to try not to jam up my hand doing this. I'm going to get a hammer. Tap. There we go. I got that pretty good. It looks just about exactly like the other one. I can take my 10 millimeter. Not that it really matters, but I want to have my two brake lines at almost the same exact angle. Just kind of a reek like that. All right, now that's all set. Okay, so I just wanted you to see what I have here. So my bolt is tight here with the appropriate washers and everything comes around, goes into my bracket. I got my horseshoe clip holding this here. So now this is, this is perfect. It's all set. It's not going to be in the way. Nothing's going to burn it. Nothing's going to chafe it. I got the similar situation going on over here. Same deal. Now I got to run a line from here up to the top of the rear end. From here up to the top of the rear end, there's a junction block and then a hose that goes off to this bracket that's on the frame right here. So I'll show you what that looks like. I already bent this and made this. So here is my bracket that goes on my rear end and there's my two hoses. So you're going to see this. I'm going to put this on the car right now. So now I just need to install it. I got a brand new hose. This is really important. Brand new hose that goes up to my frame. The reason I want to make sure I have a brand new hose is because if I use an old nasty hose, it can flake on the inside and it will do one of two things. It will clog the line, but it will clog the line in one of two ways. The first way it clogs the line is you don't get any braking. In other words, you step on the brake and the fluid doesn't pass through, you don't get any break out of your caliper. That's not good. 
The second way is even worse. What happens is it flakes on the inside and creates like a one-way flap inside the, um, the, the rubber hose. And what happens is you step on the brake, the fluid passes through, it applies pressure at the caliper, and then when you release it, the flakes fold back the other way and it holds the pressure and you, your brakes don't release. So you're stuck and there really isn't much you can do other than cut the line and then you have no brakes at all. So you want to make sure you do this. It's definitely um, worth the extra effort. The, the hose is, is super cheap. Probably cost you 15, 20 bucks. And trust me, a lot cheaper than being on the roadside. So now I got my brake line on here, right there. I'm going to get this up, going on to here. I'll put my clamp up there. All I gotta really do is tighten up my bolt and my lines, and then I'll give you a walkthrough. I'll show you the whole setup. Okay, so now I'm just gonna tighten up my brake lines. I'm gonna use a wrench to hold my rubber line, and then tighten my steel line that I had made. Get it snugged up nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. The ones at the junction block I had already tightened. But as with everything that I do, I like to double check everything. It's definitely good and tight. So is that. That's up there. I'm just going to tighten my bolt that's, uh, that's on the rear end. All right, folks. So uh, there we go. There's our uh, disc brake setup completely installed on the back of our Imperial. Now, the only other thing we have to do is we've got to do some emergency brakes, uh, emergency brake cables. Now, what I've got is I've got a cable type setup on the, uh, that moves an arm on these cables on both sides. So it will have the two cables that run off of this, this rear axle area up into the frame, just like the factory does. But I'm going to have to use a universal cable and make um, a universal type connection with the cables along to the main cable. I will make a separate video just doing the brake cables. Every time you do a disc brake conversion, there's always something funky that has to happen for the emergency brake cable situation. And uh, this one here, I'll do one specifically for this vehicle. So there we are, folks. Uh, Four-wheel disc brakes on a 64 Imperial in two videos. Uh, please take a look at my other videos. I do a lot of other videos. Uh, for some reason, a lot of Chrysler products lately. Uh, just my client base, I guess. Um, but I have videos that pretty much do anything. If there's something that you want me to do, put a message in the comments below. I'll try and get to it. If you have any questions or you need to know where I can, where you can get these types of components or have them made, please send me a message down the bottom. I will respond. Give me a like and a, a, um, a uh, thumbs up in the little like button thing. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of a lot of cool videos and it takes a lot of time to make these videos so if you could um, support my channel I'd really enjoy that and uh, thank you very much for tuning in and um, good luck on your projects